You're actually part of the of the Pulaski DNA DNA. His well, it was a, well. The, the, let, let me just kind of clarify how this all came about. Um, 1996, uh, they started taking the monument down, and they pulled the this box out of the. Paul told you that part. I'm sure. No, no. Please yeah. tell me about it because. We well, the need monument to in Savannah was deteriorating, and. It was high time to fix it, so a fundraising project started at ACPC, Paul, everybody else was involved in it, and uh, also the city of Savannah. So they got in a company there that disassembled. <coughs> the, we raised a million dollars to restore the monument. But they had to disassemble it before they could put it back together, and uh, among other things, they had to make a lot of new parts. And some of the parts, were it was the statue on top, which was done in a Trenton workshop. It's, what's, what's the name of those people? Yes. Uh, because we went over there and New we Jersey saw it porcelain. before it was shipped. Yeah, before it was shipped. New Jersey porcelain. To Savannah. And, um, the statue is made of porcelain? Well, no. See, what they did is they made a mold of the old statue out of rubber. Mm -hmm. And then they poured this marble epoxy mixture in, inside. And it made a perfect recreation of it. I mean, what they had to do is they had to fix up the original so that it would be the way it was, a sharp, because over the years, the edges got worn down. You know, it's like uh, acid rain and all that wore it down because it was, it was, they said that it wasn't the best marble. Obviously, the monument was done on a budget. So, there you have it. So, it was uh, the tallest monument in Savannah. Like over 50 feet, I think something like 55 feet. 55 feet. feet. 55 feet, really? On the, on the column? The, the, the column, yeah. Column. And how about the, 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 the statue, the statue on top alone? was 14 feet. 14 feet on the 55 feet uh, top? Tall? Yeah, with the base. Oh, we you count everything. Yeah. yeah, we were at the, from the feet up and it was taller than so us. Because she's also holding a staff <laughs> and the revolutionary cap and the whole nine yards. So it was Puaski's figure. Right, the whole, the whole no, body? No, 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 no. It the was Lady of Liberty. About? The Lady of Liberty. Or Basically, or whatever. the same lady that's on the Statue of Liberty mm -hmm. in New York mm -hmm. Harbor. Supposedly, yeah, that position. inspired this, I don't know, but it's been said. It's been said many times. Okay. So there you have that part of the story. But when they disassembled the monument, as my boss predicted, they found this box inside, an iron box with bones in it. Inside where? On the base? If there was a crypt in the Under, base. Underneath? The, in the basement in somehow? The, Under the you could say ground it, level? Like in the basement, yeah, of the monument. Okay. Of course, to get to it, everything else had to come off. Okay. So, uh, they found this box and, and a little silver plaque on it. It said, Kazimer Pulaski Brigadier General or something like that. And it was engraved in, uh, in this plaque. So now the question was, how did that get there? Well, Ed Pinkowski had already investigated this, and the story that he followed was Pulaski was taken aboard ship after being wounded, but, and he died aboard ship, but he died before the ship sailed, because the standard story that was told up until recently was that he sailed out and then died, and the body was put into the sea. So... Uh, Pinkowski's research revealed that uh, it wasn't. It was taken to a plantation nearby and buried until 1855 when the monument started. And then the family... The, the monument the, was the by Bowens. the federal government. To tell you the truth, I mean, the Masons had a lot to yeah. do with the monument, too. This monument is about Lady Liberty. <clears throat> How is it connected to Pulaski? Well, it has these... Uh, uh, base engravings on it that have Pulaski falling off his horse. Did you ever see pictures of it? No, okay. I it's, never it's, pictures of it. it oh, do it you have is, pictures of it? It is the, the dedicated to Pulaski. The, the, the whole monument the is whole monument. The dedicated. whole monument. The whole 50 feet of it with and, Lady Liberty. And the name of the, of the monument is the Pulaski the monument. monument. Yes. Even it has a Lady Liberty on the top. Even if it has Lady Got Liberty it. on top. Yes. Right. <laughs> so, but it has the, what? The... Um, Arms, that is the coat of arms of Poland and the United States, and that scene of Pulaski falling off the horse. and um, So it's, it's pretty massive. I mean, if you don't think it's the Pulaski monument, uh, 
You're blind, my man. You're blind. All right. Why the location, Savannah, Georgia? Because it happened there. Well, because yes, the Battle of Savannah. Okay, that's that's when he, he fell that down the from the horse. He was he was shot. Yes. Okay. He was rallying the troops, so we're told, at the time, and uh, okay. on horseback. And there's a very uh, there's a majestic painting by Batovsky that. Uh, shows Pulaski in full gallop uh, after, but it, you can see that he's just been hit, he's kind of falling back. We have a copy of this. What book do you want me to show, Paul? <coughs> the one from our seminar in both. The one from our seminar. You have a copy of it. So. <coughs> I why have one copy. Why don't we move to the kitchen then, because the light's better. That's yeah. right. Did you see our friend Majewski here? That's better. What did he send you now? He oh. sent me a yeah. delayed in the Bahamas. In the Bahamas. Uh, delayed. Yeah. Where did you get, you get the picture of him? He just enclosed it. It was in an envelope. No, I didn't get this. I didn't get this. Well, because I'm pressing this gentleman to finance one of my projects. <coughs> With all the tropical flowers. This is our friend Janusz Majewski. What's uh, what is the connection to the planes? What is what is the what's the reason the planes oh. are here? Is he a pilot or something? Yes, he's a pilot. He's a pilot. Okay. He goes to the antique air shows. <coughs> You're gonna have to wait a minute. Antique air shows. They have a lot of accidents. Maybe you have a picture of the Puwaski monument in Savannah, Georgia. Yes, I you'll could, get it for you. I could see it. <coughs> we have lots of pictures of the monument. I understand he was a pilot during the war. No. Well, because all the medals. Oh, yeah. the medals. This is my cousin's project. Yeah. He bought this collection of medals. Oh, so you actually buy the medals? No. You don't get it? You don't. He bought actually a collection. There were about fourteen or fifteen frames like this, with everything from the Virtuti military to, you know, whatever. These were these are sports medals uh, from the PRL period. Got it. But I have some photos which uh, might be of interest. Actually, this is the book that came out from the conference we went yeah. to in two thousand seven. Do you have a picture of the monument? Yes, there is a picture of the right monument. Right here. There you go. Picture of the monument. Okay, it's not it. wonderfully yeah. terrific. It's difficult to take a picture of this thing. The deliberate on the top. Okay. Yep. As a matter of fact, did I have... Are there any? <coughs> this is the Pulaski monument in Varka, Poland. Mm -hmm. And this is the Pulaski monument where in Hartford. Hartford, Connecticut. <clears throat> and this is the place I talked to you about where Pulaski met George Washington, the so Molin House. Close here. That's right. from near here, here, right? And there's a museum there right now at this place. Yes, there is. Mm -hmm. Washington is Pulaski yeah. and makes him his general because of the Calvary. <clears throat> Precisely. Project. Mm -hmm. Now, who is this young lady with you here? That's Yola. Young lady. That's who? Yola. That's Hayetska, Yola. Yeah. Oh, she don't look like her there. This she is looks the woman like that it. did a movie on Polaski. Yes, this lady is a is a Polish filmmaker, and she <coughs> went the whole nine yards. Okay, and actually, these are the bridges of Bergen County. Bergen County. Majewski. No, no, no. This is the Pulaski Sky. Right? Oh, this is in these, Jersey this City. Is, all of these things are Pulaski connected. This is the J bridge in Jersey City, the Pulaski it's Skyway. It's an old 1930s postcard. Oh my God. It was George Szymanski's dad gave me a bunch <coughs> of those postcards. I don't know where he came by them, but uh, this is in um, Elmira. This is Pulaski's headquarters at Valley Forge. So Pulaski was actually there? Yeah, since those days. But oh. There it is. That's the statue 
it's it's on the top. You said fourteen feet. Yes, in uh, Trenton in the factory. She's got the revolutionary cap, the wreath of victory. And this is and at this the base is the of back. The right. That's the back of the monument. Thing. Is there the front too? Yes, there is a front different. The front too. So, uh, <coughs> and this is Pulaski in Washington. It's a postcard, not a very yeah. good. I have a better photograph of that. Pulaski, Washington. Okay. Your camera can record all that. <coughs> record all that, yeah. And this is Pulaski. Where do we see this? Where do we see this? In Philadelphia, for Philadelphia. Right behind the art museum. That's Where right. Where do we see it? Jeez, oh, Paul. There's an old picture of Pulaski. There was a series of postcards like this. Nice. Um, it's Arthur Schick. These were done in the 1930s. I have a couple of them. Some are Pulaski, others are others. <laughs> so you're collecting old postcards. This Not year, really. It's whatever I come across. You know. This year is Jamestown, Virginia. Now we did a, if you want, I can give you a bunch of these because we did a reproduction <coughs> of this postcard. Uh, for the, uh, what was it, the... Our convention. Yeah, but it was the what? Which anniversary was it now? 400? 400 anniversary. 400. Yeah. I explained to him about the first settlers there. And that's the, that's the dark... Oh, this is the <coughs> Batowski painting I, I spoke of. Is which, this the one that's in Chicago? That's the one that's in Chicago. This is a huge picture. It sits on a stage well, all by itself. Well, this is a itself. reproduction. It's yeah. a print. It. It's a print, actually. The, the one in... Uh, he gets hit? Yes, this is where yeah. he gets hit. The it's one in Chicago is the original. Yes, the yeah. one in Chicago. But there are copies of it around. Yeah. And th this was a print that I... Snap a photograph. Right. Okay. Nice. But your book, what is it? it? You said it's about Polonia, and you wanted to know about <coughs> my boss. Well, my boss, Edward Pinkowski, uh, is... And I can get you a nice photograph of him. Uh, he does all this kind of research. I mean, Pulaski was like, he did this research over 30 years of his life. And, um, but not only that, we have a huge database that's on the internet with all kinds of Polish people who have com accomplished all kinds of incredible stuff. I would and like maybe just work like teachers or uh, bank managers That's what or he stuff. needs to look at. And I'm, but there are thousands of these people. Does oh, you, I would like to meet, And we're like constantly many. updating. Can he go on your database? Yes, of course. Okay. I will tell you where. Is it public? Yes, it's, it's, it's <clears throat> it, right now it's like under construction, but it's whatever is there is available. I'm going to give you my card. You, you're doing the project on Polish people in America, right? The, 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 the famous Polish people in America. Well, that's what Paul told me. Essentially, what that is is this, it's a big database. With we're pulling pulling in any and all kinds of information about Polish people, and this is something that my boss dreamed up. He says, "I want to like know everything about everybody." It's just <laughs> such a huge idea. I mean, it's like, well, let's get a grip on it. So we got some old <laughs> books out of copyright, and we started copying stuff from them. And then we got permission from Wierzbiański, who did a who's who, like around 1990. And all those things have been scanned, and they're going in slowly. We have, so far we have up to J, all those names. And there are, I think, like over, was it 7,000 or less? It's, uh, it's quite a lot. It's in the thousands. Do you have pictures of those people and uh, text Whenever information? They're, when they're available, yes, we put photographs. And today I was working um, on a, do you remember that guy, uh, when we were in Detroit, we went to the um, Orchard Lake yeah. Seminary, and there was oh, that guy of Charles. Uh, you know he died. I know that my boss. I see that in the paper yesterday. Well, I which uh, paper did you see that? Uh, the Polish, the, the uh, Poland Journal. Because that's why Pinkowski <coughs> called me on this. He said, "Did you know that?" I was surprised that, that Mary Ellen Tishka. That I'm surprised that Mary Ellen Tishka didn't call me and tell me. He died. But that was back in April, April fifteenth. Yeah, but yeah. And, and we, were, we were very close friends when he was in Doylestown. Now, so tell me something else. Yes, and that's when I was telling. I wrote a blurb. To, because I did some research on him and I found some obituaries and um, 
Uh, Henrietta Novakovsky is going to send me some more, something a little more comprehensive, she, she mm -hmm. promised. I hope it's more comprehensive. But there was a very strange thing that happened about a, less than a year when, before he died. Uh, there was a note about him filing a, a court order to freeze his, so his artworks wouldn't be removed from that, um, from that gallery. In Doylestown? No, not in Doylestown. Oh, in at Orchard Lake. Orchard Lake. And so I don't know what's going on or what was going on with that. This project of yours, okay, is it this on the is internet? Okay, right here, yeah. If you do this, www.pons.org slash db, that means database, what will happen is you will go to a blue screen and it will have some words on it, some explanations, and it will have the letters A through Z. And if you know somebody, let's say you want to look up somebody like Blanca. Pinkowski yeah. or Blanca Rosenstiel, you go to R and then a list will appear. Look up Janusz Majewski. Janusz yeah. Majewski is there, among other things. That's exactly how my website works. I have an alphabetical order and I have yes. 8,000... You have 8,000 names? Well, maybe not 8,000 names, but I have 8,000 pictures. 8,000 <laughs> Well, maybe we could put the text well, with the pictures. Maybe, maybe we could put it together. It. Could you we, could could we could coordinate the thing yeah. together. Maybe. Well, right now we're finishing this Vyazhbansky part of the project. <clears throat> and after we get that done, when all this stuff is uploaded, and this is going to happen relatively soon. Who does it for you? Who scans all those information? Well, I have an assistant who was doing all this for like the last year or more. I have an assistant. I have five assistants that are doing this for the last 10 years and well, I still cannot do it all. Obviously, you can, so much the, material. you can see the size of the thing, you know, I mean, it's, it's enormous. It's, the scanning actually was pretty simple because we scanned text and converted it, OCR'd it, and then because then when it's OCR, optical character recognition. What you can do is then you can index everything. It never works. What? It, it never well, works you have perfect. To, you have to okay. read it, correct it's, it. And yes, you have to correct <laughs> it. <laughs> this is not just scan and OCR. Yeah, well, we're talking. Can you boil some hot water oh, so I can drink some hot water? Absolutely. Sorry. It doesn't even have to be tea. Paul, can you tell me how, how, how did you, how did you, how did you, how did you DNA the bones? How did you? Well, that's oh, the problem. Well, we'll talk about it. The DNA of the bones, uh, there was a whole team of people. These were forensic doctors, including, what's the lady's name? Um, yeah. Flowers, and no, she was the, uh, hang on, she was the genealogist. Yeah. And then there was, um, <coughs> what is that name, woman's name? Are they listed in well, the book? Well, no, I don't think they're listed in this book, but this was the 2007 conference. There was also a conference uh, in 1997, which was the first international mm -hmm. conference of Pulaski, if I can find the book. Was it a complete surprise for you that th those were uh, actually body of Pulaski? Well... Nobody knew it before? before that? Was it a surprise to me? Actually, it, I sort of got into the job and then I said, well, my boss is doing this and it's all really wild that, you know, all this time has gone by. In a way, it was surprising, but I know that history is fluid, if you know what I mean. People sometimes get confused, and certain uh, facts that are known, okay, have to be clarified, and sometimes it comes out that something totally different happened. So nobody noted it, that uh, he actually was taken off the ship back to the land and buried right. there? No, because there actually, uh, Ed Dinkowski was working off some documents, if I can only find the book, then uh, I can show you the, the names and the... Uh, uh, it must be, again, on the stack in my bedroom. Hang on a second. You, you were physically there? Did you see the bones? <coughs> Did I see the bones? I saw them very briefly before they were put into the crypt. Not all the bones were put into the, into the casket, in the crypt. They still are keeping bones for further research when DNA becomes more uh, prolific, so I say. To DNA, it, you have to have some comparison. How do you, what do you have to compare it to? Well, <clears throat> that's a problem. We went to exhume the body of his aunt uh, mm -hmm. in outside of Warsaw. 
But the grave was so contaminated from the war that they couldn't get anything positive. Then we wanted to go to Pulaski's brother, <coughs> who died in the Ukraine. And he was buried in the crypt of a church in the Ukraine. And that church by the communists was totally destroyed. So you have nothing left there. <laughs> okay. Right. right. Pulaski didn't have any children. No. He, he was single. <clears throat> uh, all kinds of people said they were related to Pulaski, but we we here in America. But Pinkowski pretty well checked all these people out there. Yeah, just because they had the name Pulaski, they're saying they're related. There's a man in Buffalo who now says they're related to Pulaski, but there's no truth to it. Nobody has any proof positive of the lineage, the family lineage. So. Right. Uh, <clears throat> this would have to be the children of his brother, right? So, because he, since he didn't have but any... But the DNA, they say the best DNA comes from a female member of the family. Okay, so who, that, you know who that? would that be? No. That's why we went to the ant. Now there was another ant who's buried in Brooklyn, New York. Because there is no relative here, we could not get permission to exhume the body to do DNA. It only is through a relative who will allow it. And there's nobody who can... No, nobody here. Give nobody permission related. For so you don't have a positive DNA identification well, <clears throat> or of Pulaski? The forensic researchers have done everything. And in this book, there's a big statement. You read the whole thing and you will know it's Pulaski. Pulaski. Yeah. All forensic. the characteristics of the person. Except they couldn't match the DNA. That's the problem. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying. You know what? I can't find that. Gold but gold all gold the gold. characteristics of oh, well, Pulaski sure are all written in what here. Characteristics? What characteristics? What characteristics? His <laughs> height, the fact that the legs were bowed from years of riding on a horse. So probably 90% of people, soldiers have but that. But he also had some characteristic wounds on his head and on his arm, which matched up. Although some people said, well, if you are a sword fighting kind of guy, riding on horseback, you're going to have this kind of wound. So, uh, but how many of these guys, he was short. That was the one thing that, that kind of... Um, and the box had the, uh, some the kind box of plot. Had, now, the thing is, of course, some people said, well, this could be mistaken, it could be another soldier, they thought it was Pulaski, all this kind of stuff. Uh, didn't have well, I'm going to give you these two old newsletters because I have duplicates copies. You buy the Pulaski Monument. No, you've got these. And so. this is St. Hedwig's Church. I brought a choir from Poland to sing at St. Hedwig's but Church. But here you have mm -hmm. some interesting stories maybe that will inform you. But so you can have these two things. Thank these you. These are extras. There was no, no I have extras, yes. There was no uh, my, uh, uniform or anything? Uh, no, the thing is they were hoping they would find something. But see, you have to remember, he was first buried on this plantation for oh, right, X right, right. number of years. That's right. And then there were souvenir hunters. So not all the teeth were there. And uh, it's kind of difficult to say when they were, you know, thinking that essentially what they did is they just plucked all the bones out. It's amazing that 80 per some percent of the skeleton actually was there. Did you see it yourself? Uh, I didn't, but there were photographs of it. As a matter of fact, <coughs> I will show you a photo. Didn't you see the one bone that was retained? I don't know what they retained exactly. There but was a bone. So here the is a photograph of my boss, his son, and the forensic team, which was Charles Murbs <coughs> and um, okay, no, that's Pulaski Kathleen Jones. Burns, what or Kath Karen Burns. This is my thesis. Oh, okay. <laughs> this, I wrote my master's thesis on this subject. Wow. So, great. and I have all these photographs. If you should ever want to use them, I can make them available to you. But essentially, I decided that I would have a little thing. This is my copy. There are two at the university. And <coughs> I have to read your thesis. No. <laughs> Let me read it one is it day. On, on one day. Internet? Yes. <laughs> Mine got lost in the flood in my house. Sorry. 
But the thing is, I was going to say that this is a very interesting book here that gives you a lot of background information. Most of it is correct, except for the part about the, uh, the birth and the death. Okay? The birth, actually, that's a very interesting s situation because Pinkowski actually wasn't the guy who proved that. It was another researcher in Poland. But we went to the church. It's the Holy Cross Church in Warsaw. And they actually had four books handwritten from the 1700s where the priests made entries. First they made them in sort of, you would say, Brudnapis. Then they would transfer it to the good book. And because Pulaski received the sacrament first, and then later there was like a continuation of the ceremony with the godfathers, three of them, and... Uh, Tell them who his three godfathers were. Well, I can't off the top of my head, oh. but I know one of them was the father of King Stanislav August, Paniatowski. Okay. <coughs> so, um, he was in very good company. His father was a very high up guy. <laughs> so, Yusuf Pulaski. But this we're, book... We're referring to Holy Cross Church. In Warsaw. Why did you say that there was a, an error about his birth? Well, because most people write that he was born in 48, or if you look in this book, which is a fairly nicely done book, it will, somewhere here it will say he was born in like 46 or whatever. And they say he was born in Varka. Yes, and, he and they all say born in Varka. He, he was born, born in, in Warsaw. Warsaw. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and his parents had an apartment right around the corner from Holy Cross Church. And, and of course. course there are all these stories that have been invented like the fact, the, the fact, the fictitious fact that Pulaski met Kostyshko in Trenton, okay? Or... Um, oh, we still hear that story. We keep hearing the story but there's like no proof. I mean it's so... Yes, it would seem like it's logical. Because nobody has any records on that restaurant. And the restaurant is still there, as you were. Have you ever seen that restaurant? What's the name of no. it? Which restaurant is in there? In Trenton. Okay, Pulaski, uh, according to this restaurant. book, was born in on March 4th, 1747. But if you go to those records, you will see that the baptism took place on March 6th, 1745. Two years before he was born. Two according years before he was born in this book, yes. Okay. So, and so these dates are all over the place. Whatever source you consult, you'll get a different date. And uh, uh, it's not that there was a purposeful error, it was just that people didn't know any better. There was also a famous um, list of Pulaski um, clan in Varka, which was compiled by the priest, and every, that was done in the 18th century. Well, after Pulaski's death, after he was already gone. So, um, uh, that priest just compiled it, but he really didn't know the people. He wasn't there at the Baptists and so forth. So, but everybody who looked at well, this is like end of 17th, uh, end of 18th century. So it's got to be, it's old, so it's got to be right because the guy was closer to it, but he wasn't <clears throat> any more right than what other people were. Oh, by the way, this I wanted to show you. This is the who's who of Yezbiansky that we've put into the computer. Okay, so this is on your side. Pol this is not all of it. So Pols. Just part of it. Org. Excuse me? Pols. Yes, that's this part book of it. Is, it's part of it. You got permission from, from the yes, author? Yes, we got <coughs> permission from Mrs. Yezbiansky. Maybe we could merge somehow our sites, your side it and my side. It would be great. It would be great. How many books of these are available? This you can still yeah. buy if you want. You still buy. Yeah, you can still buy. But the thing is that this is by no more means comprehensive. No. It just covers certain individuals. Like what they did is they mailed out uh, uh, essentially information sheets. Would you please fill this in and you'll be in the book. And just about everybody who mailed one in made it in. And the idea was, I guess, to sell the book, which is a nice thought. And it was a great thing because then you had like a record of people. But then certain people didn't send stuff in. Like Pinkowski isn't in here, for example. Mm -hmm. but there's a lot of people who are not in there who should be in there. Well, obviously, so that's essentially we have to kind of fill in the blanks. Yeah. But this book is kind of neat because it kind of gives you an out outline. There are a lot of photographs, port portraits, pictures of medals, <coughs> pictures of memorabilia, and so forth. But the thing is, like, the place to go, if you, I don't know, 
there is this guy Goralik listed. These are actually around the world, Polonians. Uh, EFG. Here is Mr. Goralik, and he is Gorayak, excuse me, Gorayak. And he is the designer of the Gorayak Tower in Seattle. And the, yeah, the Gorayak Tower in Seattle looks like the Space Needle, doesn't it? Definitely. Now, I would like to, the, the thing is that he doesn't identify it as the Space Needle. <clears throat> he just identifies it as the Goriac Tower, <laughs> which kind of sets up now. I try to find him on the internet. But is this true? That well, is he a designer or the architect God or something? God knows. No. Uh, obviously, like from this bio, which he submitted himself, because he filled out an Anketa Biografichna, yeah. I mean, you, anybody can put anything that they freaking want. So I can know? be designer of the Eiffel Tower. Precisely. You can. <laughs> I, mean, I don't think too many people will believe you, but uh, okay, if you want, you know. Uh, the thing is, I would say that he might have been an, uh, a structural engineer in one of the companies that built this tower. Right. And so he felt that he had some stake in it. But I've never heard of this tower referred as the Gorayak Tower. Yeah. That's right. It's, funny. Yeah, it's yeah. like, just go to Seattle and take me to the Gorayak Tower, though. <laughs> what? <laughs> so I think it's kind of funny, but it also shows you like the, the level of the scholarship is that the, the makers can't possibly check everything. This is one of the places where like these things fall in, you know. It's um, on the thing that you're working on. Do yes. you have mostly text or mostly videos, uh, pictures? Do you have other media? It's a mixture. Yeah, we have. Uh, it's a mixture of photographs, text, and also we've scanned some articles. From... They are OCR or they're just pictures too? Oh no, they're just JPEGs. 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 Yeah. JPEGs of text. That's nice. So. Okay. It, because you can't possibly do everything. I mean, especially right. trying to OCR newspaper text is like, this was actually easy to OCR. Look how beautiful this is. This right. is just super clean. Okay. So, and my assistant, what he did is he kind of essentially edited these things. This doesn't have any pictures, right? Just no, this text. has no photos. Pure text. No. Now, the thing that will surprise you to learn probably is that the, um, um, uh, it's the, uh, Taha, Polish uh, American Historic Association, is putting out an encyc encyclopedia of Poles, okay, which have articles in them. And I wrote 10 of the articles about various Poles. And, uh, Are they co connected to America somehow? Connected or? to America somehow, yes. Okay. It's like a Polish-American type of right, encyclopedia. Mm -hmm. It's uh, sort of the equivalent of this, except I don't know how the graphics were handled, because I get, for some of the people that I wrote up, I have photographs that were mine, or I had them from the estates of the people, or wh whatever. I mean, I came by them legally, and I had permission to pass the photographs on. So, and I, I wrote about some individuals that were not very well known. Uh, there was a gentleman by the name of um, Tadeusz Witlin. There was a Józef Witlin. I don't know if you connect these, but Józef Witlin was a poet living in New York. Uh, Tadeusz was a journalist living in Washington, and I actually was. It was suggested to me that I should write my doctorate uh, dissertation on this man, because he wasn't just uh, a journalist; he was also a um, uh, a writer and a poet and um, the editor of a magazine called America. It was a, like a propaganda magazine that came out in Poland in Polish in the 60s. It started, I think, coming out in the 50s. There was an agreement between Poland and the United States for like a cultural exchange. That was after Gamuka came in. And in, here in the States, they were circulating a magazine called Poland, which I'm sure you must have seen. Uh, maybe not. But it had stuff about Polish posters and Polish science and Polish theater and Polish American things and visits by dignitaries right. and yes, whatever. Yes, I've seen it. You've seen it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was that, but Americans had a similar thing about America in Poland. And I, to tell you the truth, the thing that attracts me to this topic is that because the first issue of that I ever saw absolutely captivated me. It was, um, yeah, you can just take a picture. It was about, it had the, the centerpiece story was about the Kennedys, but there was a story about Disneyland. 
and a story that knocked me out. It was entitled, When a Boy Buys His First Car, the operative word being first. Okay. So, uh, it's very nicely done. I mean, in terms of quality of printing, it's just beautiful. Those are people in France? All over Pol the, yeah, Polish the, people. The Yudzkis. The Yudzkis are. They live in France. So they those are Polish this, people in France. Yeah. They no, but these the, the individuals are all over the world. If you ever go to Paris, and you go to the Père Lachaise Cemetery, there is a whole section there, all famous Polish people, including Chopin. His grave is there in Paris. Right. His heart was brought His to heart Warsaw. Is in Warsaw. Yeah. But that's that's that who's who, okay. <clears throat> so there, then there's also an encyclopedia that came out in Poland. It was printed in Torun that has my picture in it. Which book in Torun? That uh, Encyclopedia Polskie Emigracji i Polony, or something like who that. Who published that? It University. was Kucharski. Kucharski. Oh. And it's a five-volume set, and it, they're like. 800 pages each, and it's this kind of printing. Maybe not a, quite as nice as this, but it's color pictures wherever they could get them. But that one's all in Polish. That one's all in Polish. Right. Encyclopedia with people? or With people, with of people. people, yes, of Polonians, mm -hmm. all over the world. Okay. I mean, I could argue about the whole concept, the way they put it together, and uh, I love that. So you're not the first, unfortunately. I hate to break it to you. <laughs> but like you said, if you put living people in it, and they like it, they'll buy it, you know. Uh, what's the name of your organization you're working for? I work for the Poles in America Foundation, Inc. Okay, so this is something like Maybe this. I'll write it on the back. Please. Yeah. It's the Poles in America Foundation. <coughs> Let me give you my telephone number because this just gives me a home number. It's 215-567-0327. So, yeah, you, to be this, this is a very deep topic, you know, when you <laughs> embark on something like this. Well, he wants to get more and more involved, so I thought, you know, maybe I suggested him going to Crazy Horse. I think that, that, uh, that project alone, I mean, that's like worth <coughs> a buck. <laughs> yeah, definitely. In this way, he'll get to meet some of our people. But should he agree to come, uh, you want me to call Debbie and say he's coming? Or you want to tell Debbie? and Well, who is, you're going who, who is to... Debbie? Is, is the, the president, president of the, of the ACPC. ACPC, the American Council for Polish Culture. It's, it's an umbrella group that the Trenton Club is an affiliate. I belong to the Polish Heritage. I should re, I should repay my, my dues. dues. Yeah, for they're Trenton. after me for three years. And uh, ACPC meets at Crazy Horse every year. American Council for Polish Culture. No, no. What they do is it's they have the convention in a different place every year. Like last year we were in Hartford, <coughs> right. the year before that we were in Jamestown, or Williamsburg rather, yes. and before that we were in Detroit, and before that we were in, uh, it, no, in Poland. Oh and yes, we were in uh, Poland, that's right. What city? Gdansk. 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 And then a few years before that we were in Krakow, and then a few years before that we were in Pultus. We have had three conventions in Poland already. This book, okay. Okay. I acquired this is this book once belonged to the Salt Lake City Library System, <laughs> and I bought it over the internet. Uh -huh. I wanted one, and they have a re this has been re issued as a reprint, but the reprint is really not nice. Yeah, it's a smaller size and. And this has a list of million people? No, I wish it were, had it. <laughs> it's Kunitek's way of saying, well, there's so many of us, but nobody knows about you it. You know who Kunitek was? He lived here in Pennsylvania. 
-hmm. He's another one you should have, we have listed. He's a, he was a writer, a translator, and... Uh, In your publication, do you have... Yes, uh, Do have you have them. people that are still alive? Uh, yes, yes, there are people. In this database, there are do people. Do you contact alive. them yourself, and do you do interview them, or you just take well, existing text and... Just copy them. And in many cases, the way we got the text was it was published like in one of these programs. Let's say they were honored for something. So that's like public information and we can we just grab it. So this is not your text you, like this. You don't you don't write it yourself no, about no, the person. No, no, so, no. so what do you actually do? Just collect the information we collect. and put it together on the website? Pretty much. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't like to write about My people boss that are alive now. In many places. Well, let me say this, the 10 people, the 10 items or people that I did for uh, Paha's book. Oh, so you have like... Uh, I have those, I wrote those up. For example, Vitlin, I wrote up, I wrote up uh, Majeski, I wrote up other people. Now, the thing is now, the question is, they paid me for the text. It's like, you know, three cents a word or whatever. And the texts are short. So I don't know if I can now release it to other people to use, you know. I, personally, I feel that, you know, it belongs to the world. You know, if they pay me nothing, I'd be happy. Ooh. How about new project like this? Oh. How about people that are still alive and we visit them? I <laughs> photograph them and you write something about them I, I, upon the That's interview. That's a lot of work, you know that. Oh. 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 Because to write a good short paragraph, <clears throat> it, you really have to think about it, you know. So I. The maybe books. we'll discuss that part. Yeah, off camera. At some point. But look, the the book with text only is very is is nice, but it's kind of sad. Mm -hmm. The book with pictures only. It's not a book. It's a right, photo, it's album. photo album. So you need something together, in between, right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It should be both. Book is interesting, right? It is a nice book. I'm looking at the Polish but market he got, in Manhattan. When it got reviewed, when this book got reviewed, it got panned because he made some obvious mistakes. Yeah. The thing is, you and I wouldn't know it. Okay. But an expert, like a historian who studies Polish American history, yeah. picks it up right away, you know. And uh, I have the review somewhere, and it was Dr. Um, who was it that wrote the review? Oh, God, gosh darn it. Can't think of the name. Uh, but uh, Pula, Dr. Pula from yeah. Purdue, when he reviewed that, this book, he said, well, you know, it's a nice start, but he got this wrong, and he got this wrong, and he got this wrong, and this picture is not the right picture, and the <laughs> caption is, the years are off. And of course, what they, he wrote, of course, Kunichek had to rely on secondary sources, what was available. So obviously, when he wrote up Pulaski, he put in like 1940, 1747, right? Or whatever, for his birthday. He didn't have this information about. Oh, oh, oh. What? what? What did he put in? They got the sculptor of Pulaski's Bust in Washington, Mohoski. D.C. Sanders. Mohoski, yeah. Sanders, yeah. Now, one project that I'm working on currently is the Ivana Stefaniak in Varka wants to publish a book. It's the Pulaski, she's the director of the Pulaski Museum there. And she wants to publish a book about Pulaski's monuments in the United States. So I started gathering, and you know how many there are? There, it's, it's like over a hundred, and there are plaques, and there are other things. And, and there are highways, and towns, and counties, and... That's why I saved stuff like, like the stamp, and the, um, and the other things, because like these, these things like, I mean, how do you class stuff like, there's Pulaski on stained glass windows at the Częstochowa in Doylestown. Right. And he also has a chapel marker in a Protestant chapel in Valley Forge. And so these, as you start researching these, well, where's the next one? Where's the next one? Where's the next one? And it's endless. It just draws you in. Uh, fortunately, we had this gentleman, uh, John Schuch, out of um, the Toledo, Ohio, not Toledo, it's Seville, Ohio. And he, uh, as a young man, uh, he got this idea that he would collect things of Pulaski. I visited his, his house, and it is actually chock full of Pulaski portraits, Pulaski statuettes, Pulaski logos, Pulaski buttons, and he asked people to send him more stuff. So whenever I come across like a Pulaski beer can, he gets that, okay? Or a Pulaski button, he gets that. Mm -hmm. And then he sent me stuff like, he sent me these pennies that were crushed and imprinted with Pulaski's face. They were 
elongated. It was they did it for some kind of anniversary. Mm -hmm. It's kind of crazy, but this stuff like metals, there are like different Pulaski metals. I own, I, I got a Pulaski medal from the Pulaski cadets, you know, and it's all, it all kind of accumulates, and this guy's house is like bulging with this stuff. You couldn't open you the know, door. The, the first man who helped finance America, finance the America. early settlers. Who was that? A Polish he Jew. lived in uh, the Netherlands. No, you're not. Peter oh, Stadnitsky. Oh, Stadnitsky, but there is also that Heinen guy. Yeah, I know. Who financed the revolution? He was and a Polish there Jew. There was this guy in, who, um, in Canada. Uh, Gazowski. Yeah. yeah. So this is this is kind of a nice book to have. I mean. If you're into Pulaski, okay, I don't think you're in that much oh into Pulaski. It's also about Kostyushka, I see. It is also about Kostyushka. Did right? you know mm -hmm. that there was an opera about Pulaski? Yes, it's called Bohiga, Flower of the Forest. All right. By Sobolewski. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I ought to take this book home and read it all the way through. He loves my books. The Ice of Employment, which was a brewery, got a case of beer and drove through Texas drinking beer in a convertible, and it was just wild time. And they were both wild. drunk. Yeah, they were a little bit buzzed, yes. <laughs> I figured, you know, what, what you can know, happen you know, to me? I'm with a priest. He'll say their last rites. You know who a good friend of mine is? Who's that? Bishop Andrzej Suski, the Bishop of Toto in Poland. I was at his ordination. I was at his, uh, when he was installed bishop in Płotz, and then when he was installed bishop of Toto, and I was there also. We've been friends. And you know where we met? <clears throat> in France, we were at Lourdes, and I was with a friend of mine for the summer, and we were helping to take care of the sick people. And one night when the procession began, each country was represented and these people were singing in Polish, so I went and joined singing Pogura Dolina. And there was Andrzej Suski, and we were working together, and we were speaking French, working together, and he didn't know I knew Polish till that night. Boy, you must have surprised the hell out of him. <laughs> I was surprised to see him, too. <laughs> so I was invited to all his occasions in Poland. What what is in Panna Maria, Texas, right now? What is what this? What is it? Is it church, the church is in here. The church is still there. The church is there. There's a museum, and there's a lot of Polish people. Nearby is Kościuszko. Pawelikville. Yeah, all kinds of Poland. Uh, Częstochowa. Częstochowa. I went. Th we went through all those times because what happened was the soil around Panna Maria was very rocky. I you know I boiled some water, Paul. <laughs> That yeah, was like two hours ago. Yeah, like <laughs> I'm joking. Let me just. It's, I'm sure it's. Not, let me just hit the button here. Oh, I tell you. But we've done an awful lot of things. It's like Peter you, and I this traveled. This stuff will drive you crazy. Peter after and I traveled off in the United States in his car. In my car, his car, in his father's car. We went car. to Detroit and Cleveland, car. Detroit. To Savannah, I don't know how many times we went. We made Savannah. about ten trips to Savannah for the funeral, working on the funeral. How long did you use to drive to Savannah, Georgia? Twelve hours, straight through. Start at six in the morning. We're there at six in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. That's not bad. No, essentially, if you have a number of people who can share the driving, yeah. it just and that Yola, that woman that you saw in the photograph, filmmaker. Yeah, she yeah. says she loved driving, and she, she says, drove "Can I? Us. Can I drive?" I said, "Be my guest," you know. So she got in there. She right drove down. right through from Savannah to. I think I think she drove from about. We were down in the. Um, well, she drove all the way to Washington. We were past down. No, no. We picked her up in Washington. No, no, in Savannah, coming back. Oh, coming back. She drove all the way to Washington. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. <coughs> But going down, I remember uh, when did we? When did she take over? I'm trying to think. It was we were down a ways, and then we let her have the wheel and just sat back. Those were the days when I would walk normal. I wouldn't be able to do it now. Oh, God. You're gonna go to Crazy Horse? 
Yeah. Yes, I want to go. My problem is the transportation because I'm on a very strict budget, unfortunately. Are you going to fly out? or what? No, no, no. It's like, if I can't get a ride with somebody uh, to share the costs, mm -hmm. I think what I'm going to do is just get on the bus and get there like two weeks later. <laughs> how, many, how many days? What it's is about, South Dakota? It's about three days. Three days. To drive? Yeah. Three days to drive? Because the way when, when the girls from um, Detroit were thinking yeah. of taking me along, uh, we were, what I was going to do is drive to Detroit like in one day, which is quite yeah. possible. Detroit is like what, 12 hours, 13 hours? No. Less than that. Less I think nine. Hours, nine. 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 Really? Hours. It's closer than Chicago? Oh, definitely. Oh, Detroit? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's not even, well, it's like not even three quarters, like two thirds of the way. Yeah. It's I've okay. driven them all. And then? And then we were going to start off together. But from, that is from Detroit. But I want to, what I want to do is these markers, the Gabreski marker, which you will read there on the second page, that was T, Paul? Just water, even. Just, oh. Water. <clears throat> uh, let me see. Would you like some cranberry juice? That's all I've got. Okay, I just put something in to take the water flavor away. One of those uh, markers you want is. Regular tap water or. Uh, Nothing wrong with our tap water. <laughs> no, nothing wrong. No, in the hot water, pour it in the oh, hot you water. You want it in the hot water? Yes, in the hot water. That's Paul, let me do this for you. Here. You will, you will set the ratio of mixture for yourself. You know, I use three quarters of water. Three quarters of water. Three quarters of water. Say uh, one. About there. Yeah, that's about. okay. If necessary, I will drain it. If it's yeah, I'm going to just warm my throat. There's, a, there's this marker that Careful. you want to... I don't think I tightened that right. I was started talking about the Gabreski marker. It's, there are people in Pittsburgh who are going to be the actual... Did you want something? No, no I'm fine. Thank you. Uh, who are the actual organizers of the... Uh, ceremony, the dedication, the banquet to go with it, because it was, when I made the application, it turned out that it was too far of a reach, it's like 250 miles, you know, I mean, to drive there, make the arrangements, come back, drive, make the arrangements, come back, Pittsburgh is a lot closer, they can do it all in one day, you know, so uh, it's the Kostrushko Foundation Pittsburgh chapter, and it's John Bartis, who's the president, and he I convinced them that they wanted to do it, so all the paperwork was taken care of, so they didn't have to bother with that, and I promised that this gentleman would be the sponsor, and so I'm working on Is him. he sponsoring it? I don't know, I need to, maybe I'll call him to, tomorrow to see if, because he was, this thing, he was going to China, he went to the Bahamas, then he went to China, so, but he said that it's something that his company could sponsor, mm -hmm. he says, but he doesn't make the decision by himself, obviously, so, um, I'm just hoping he will say yes so we can move ahead with this thing because the, the, the group wants to do it like in October. I talked to his wife a couple times when he never calls me back. Well, I have no problem. I call him at work and I tell the secretary says, Yeah, but you know, every who time I you? call, he's away. Well, that's what I want to find out is when he, is he going to be back so I can kind of put the... Well, if he's in the office, he talks to me, but if he's not in the office, I, I no well, way to talk Be patient. You can't, you know, this is a... Well, God, and I got so sick this year, I just gave up on everybody. So you, now you can come back. How many times did you come and see me in the hospital? Each time? I don't know. I guess each time you were there. <laughs> the first time, the second time. And the third time. Yeah. But to make a long story short, with this marker is, it's all coming together and you know, like it or not, it's going to happen. Well, there is a marker in Pittsburgh already. But I want to stop, well, there's that one marker that we went to photograph. Yeah, and that was went for Went up who? and down the hills. That was for who? That was for Paderewski. It was th this marker here, the uh, Polish Army marker. So on You'll the, find on the, the history of Paderewski in America very interesting. Yeah, yeah, I got him. I think he's, he's one of the biggest, too. Kościuszko, Pułaski, Modrzelewska and, and Paderewski. This is the, the sequence, I think. 
so on your way to Detroit, so you're going to photograph this marker? Well, no. Well, this marker. <laughs> yes, we photographed. I think we were on our way to Cleveland. We photographed this marker. I'll show you. But the marker I'm talking about for Gabreski is, like I said, in the process of becoming. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I want to do is stop in Pittsburgh on my way out to this convention and talk to these people personally to encourage them. And uh, here's the Polish Army marker. This is in front of a Falcons Hall. I actually have a good picture of this somewhere. But. Uh... <gasps> So we'll drive to Detroit and then with well, two other ladies. Well, right now, well, if some, that's the, that was the original plan, but it's not working out that way. So I have to find some other ways. Like I said, at worst, I'll come up the on the air, bus. What's the airfare there? I have no idea, but it's probably like five hundred dollars. Four hundred, uh, Dana said. Well, Peter, because I, I know I owe you a treat. If I get you that check, I don't know when I'm going to get that check. I'll well, give thing, it to you. Yeah, if you give me some money, I'm going to use it to pay my taxes or something, you know, because I am like, I'm going to be, when I pay my taxes in, at the I end of July, I'm going to be broke.